In this video, I'm going to go over the pros and cons of low content book publishing, whether you can make any money from it and whether publishing on KDP is even worth it. Welcome to my channel. My name is Caroline. And if you are new here and would like to continue seeing new videos from me every single week, just like this one, please take a moment to subscribe. I really do appreciate it. So is low content publishing even worth it? Can you even make money from it in 2022 and beyond? Or is it too late? Has that ship sailed on having success with publishing books on Amazon KDP? That's what we're going to talk about in this video all the things good and bad. There's a lot of people out there who for one reason or another have tried publishing low content books on Amazon KDP with little to no success. And maybe they didn't pick a good niche or maybe they didn't create that good of a book or a book that met the customer's needs or maybe they just didn't give it enough time to see results. But some of these people will blame it on things like it being oversaturated or it even being a scam and just totally not worth your time. Being oversaturated is rarely true. And as for being a scam, that often comes down to that person's expectations of what is required to see success or essentially to make money from it as opposed or compared to the reality of what is actually required to see success. And sometimes that's not even their fault. So let's get into some expectations that you should have about this business model and figure out whether low content book publishing is even worth it. First of all, though, I would like to give a huge shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 countries. It's a place for people like me who love learning and getting inspired to be creative. I love that Skillshare has such a massive range of classes available to you across all different topics. I'm a huge advocate for self-education and always learning new skills, always improving existing skills. And self-improvement is really a lifelong journey. It's something that you should continue doing as long as you can. We should never stop learning new things. Something that I've been enjoying learning about and improving upon lately is my productivity and creating positive productivity habits. And a class that I took this week was Real Productivity, How to Build Habits at Last, which is run by Thomas Frank. And by taking this class, it has helped me to learn how to build some of those productivity habits that are actually helping me reach my goals. Because Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, it is ad-free, which is great for productivity with less distractions and new premium classes are always being added. Skillshare has a great offer for the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description box below or use my code MYFREEDOMEMPIRE. You will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. The trial gives you access to the complete library of classes so you can learn something new today. Okay, back to today's topic. I wanna to start out by saying, that I really do think you need to publish books that are more considered medium content as opposed to low content books, which are just books that have a little more unique content in them in terms of the interiors rather than low content books. I did a video last week all about why you should start publishing medium content books and exactly what they are. Books like coloring books, educational workbooks and activity books, etc. Et and until recently, these books were classed or talked about or bundled together with low content books. But I'll link that video on the screen above and down in the description box below if you want to go see what that video was all about after watching this one. But just for the sake of everybody easily understanding the terms that I'm going to be using in this video, I'll be using the term low content books, which encompasses coloring books, workbooks, activity books, and other similar types of books. I think the biggest thing going for low content book publishing is its low barrier to entry. By this, I mean you do not have to invest a whole lot of money to get started or even any money at all. You don't need any specialized kind of equipment or buy any kind of stock or inventory. And you don't have to invest a lot of time to get up and running or to see results from it. So in comparison, when you think about most other types of businesses, maybe like starting a traditional business, like maybe opening up a physical store of some kind, 
selling physical products, for example, the amount of money that you need to start a business like that is huge. You need to pay for the premises, the location itself. You obviously have to fit it out. You have to fill it with stock before you can even start operating. There's also the time that it takes to get ready to start operating that kind of business. The chunk of time is huge. Even starting something like an MLM business or a network marketing business has less of a monetary investment in comparison to start it, but the time it takes to start seeing results in those kind of businesses, it can be pretty substantial to build up a team and to recruit all these people that you need to recruit to help build your income. But let's say you even start a book publishing business, not on Amazon KDP, maybe with the intention of getting your books into stores like maybe Walmart or Target or gift stores or something like that. The amount of work that you would have to do, the amount of people you would have to meet with and have presentations with to get these stores to buy your books in bulk, which then means you would have to outlay money to have all your books printed in bulk so that you could supply these people if they did want to stock your books and all that sort of stuff would make it a business that the majority of people are not going to want or be able to do. So the fact that you can create unlimited amounts of books and have them published and for sale on Amazon, the biggest online store, online shopping platform in the world, and people actually buying them within a few days is pretty amazing. And this leads on to another related positive, and that is that it is relatively low risk. Because of the fact that you don't have to invest a whole heap of money or time, so if you decide that you don't like it, it doesn't work for you, or for whatever the reason is that you don't want to continue publishing books, you can get out of this business model without really losing too much. Let's say that you do invest a couple hundred dollars or even $500 on some software, for example, to help you make books. You spend a couple months of your time making and publishing these books, and then for whatever reason you decide not to continue on with it, that's not really a big deal in the grand scheme of things in comparison to one of those businesses I mentioned earlier where it can cost you tens of thousands of dollars to start and then if you decide it isn't going to work for you, that's a lot of money to lose. It's a much bigger risk and a much bigger loss. The other great thing about publishing books on Amazon is that you get immediate access to their massive built-in customer base. Amazon has probably some of the most loyal customers out there, so the fact that you don't have to go out and find your own customer base from scratch is a massive benefit. Amazon is the biggest online marketplace in the world for online shopping. They have over 310 million customers worldwide and it is expected that they will reach over 76 million Prime members in 2022. So why would anyone <laughs> think that it's not worth it? Seems silly too, doesn't it? Well, there are definitely some cons to publishing on Amazon, as with everything else out there. Everything has pros and cons. The biggest downside is probably that there is such a massive amount of competition, particularly with low content books on Amazon. Because of the fact that it is such an easy business to start, a lot of people take advantage of that. And a lot of these people are looking for an easy way to make money with publishing, which means there are a lot of people copying books instead of coming up with their own unique ideas and designs, unfortunately. And I'd like to give you an example here. So for an example, there is a coloring book, this particular one here, the Creepy Kawaii Pastel Goth Coloring Book. This coloring book is one of the best sellers in coloring books and has been for quite a while now. It took advantage of the kawaii trend and it went with a sort of creepy pastel kawaii style. They were one of the first publishers or people to create this style of coloring book using that kawaii creepy trend. And when people saw that book, book getting popular, they all jumped on the bandwagon and there are now thousands of books in the kawaii style using the pastel colors as well. Some of them even copying the cover design on their own books. So they're all using similar kind of font, 
placing the font in the same place that the original book did, using the same pastel colors. A lot of them are even using the rainbow background design that the original book did as well. And it can just be really frustrating for the person who originally created this design. They had something unique at the time. And now when you go on there, there's just hundreds of people copying them. Another one is this WTF is my password logbook. So this is just a logbook to record passwords in. This one here here, the pink flower design is the original. This one was created back in 2019. It is still the best seller. So the positive to all of this is that when you establish a book, you keep that rank. You've already built up sales history. You've built up reviews. But the annoying thing is when it started doing well, hundreds of other people, thousands of other people jumped on and started copying this phrase and even the design with the dark background with the flowers. You can see that they're clearly trying to copy the bestseller in that niche. If you do have a book that does start to do well, expect that it won't take long for a whole heap of copycat books to pop up trying to take sales from your book. Unfortunately, because low content books are easy to copy and they're generally something that you can't copyright, you can't really do much about this sort of thing happening. And I really think it is also something that you should just not focus on or spend too much time worrying about either. Another downside to this business and something that a lot of people aren't comfortable with is the fact that you actually don't really have a lot of control over your business. So because even though it is your business, you are selling on a third party platform, which you do not own and you have no control over whatsoever. If Amazon decide to not allow selling low content books on their platform anymore, there's nothing that you can do about that. If they change their algorithm and a book that you had that was selling really well stops selling overnight, there is nothing that you can do about that. If they decide they don't like something that you did, or even if just by mistake, something happens to your account, they can terminate your account overnight and there is nothing that you can do about it. If you don't like this lack of control or the idea that your business can change overnight without you having a say in it at all, then maybe selling anything on Amazon is not the business model for you. So is low content book publishing even worth it? Yes, it is. I truly believe that the pros outweigh the cons. And if you really do want to build a legitimate publishing business on KDP, you can. You just need to go about it the right way. Stop looking at too much competition and thinking that the market or particular niches are oversaturated and start looking at it as opportunities. Where there's competition, there's demand. If people weren't buying a particular type of product, then people wouldn't be scrambling to sell that type of product. When you go to the cereal aisle at your local supermarket or your grocery store, you don't only see a, one or two brands or one or two different types of cereals. There are massive, long aisles, endless aisles, all dedicated to cereal. There are hundreds of different types of cereal and there are new brands and new types of cereal popping up all the time, trying to get a piece of the pie. They don't think, oh, well, there's no point trying to sell our cereal because there's hundreds of other different types of cereals. It's all saturated and Cheerios is the most popular cereal anyway. Let's not even bother. I'm not sure if that's a good <laughs> analogy, but I hope you get my point. Have a strategy and stick to it. It's a good idea to sometimes pick your end point or how much money you want to make and figure out a way to get there with the types of books that you want to make, what niches that you want to make books in, and maybe even look at what kind of marketing you might need to do to get there or what type of software you might need to invest in to help you make those books. And a big thing as well is don't stress or worry about what other people are doing. It can sometimes be easy to fall into the trap of spending too much time looking at the copycats, looking at what they're doing, what books they've copied this week, ranting about them in social media, in Facebook groups and things, or getting involved with groups that spend a lot of time worrying about what these kind of publishers are doing. If you find success with a book or with multiple books, you are going to get people copying. And you just need to accept that. But the advantage to this is that by the time people notice your book and start copying, it's because your book's already selling and hopefully you will have built up momentum and hopefully that will help your book stay above the copycats. If not, keep working on new books or keep working on marketing books that you already have published. Just focus on what you're doing. I know it's frustrating, but if it's happening, 
you're doing something right. Hopefully you agree that by looking at the pros and cons, low content book publishing is definitely still worth it and is definitely not dead or oversaturated. If you have found this video helpful, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.